It's the maximum possible prison sentence for a Midwest school teacher now convicted of sexually abusing multiple students. She believes these things, I imagine, to be relationships. Because of that, she doesn't view them as being predatory or, or, or wrong in, in, in that sense. But for 24-year-old Cassidy Krause, those relationships made way for multiple criminal charges, a guilty plea for all counts, and a 33-year prison sentence. You compartmentalize that role as being authority figure, and you start using the role as being a lover or a romantic partner. We first told you about Cassidy Krause back in October, when she was arrested for sexually abusing multiple young boys between ages 13 and 14. Krause was a middle school reading teacher in Manning, Iowa, about two hours west of Des Moines. Investigators there say Krauss used Snapchat to send explicit photos to at least three children in the first six months of 2022. On top of that, she molested two 13-year-olds in May of that same year. The abuse continued into January 2023 when she performed sex acts with a 14-year-old. She resigned from her position as a teacher back in August when an investigation into the sexual abuse began. For all these allegations, Krauss faced six charges, including sex abuse, two counts of lascivious acts with a child, and three counts of dissemination of obscene material to minors. Forensic psychologist Dr. John Delatory says it's likely Krauss wasn't thinking about the implications when she committed the crimes. I think sometimes you, the person has to condition themselves to think that everything is okay. I think she understood, most people understand that you clearly cannot sexually abuse children. You shouldn't be abusing anybody at, at any time of any kind. But even despite that knowledge and even in trainings, I imagine she's been told that you need to not touch your students. There was still something that was there that kind of overrode all of that, you know, understanding all of those principles that she had. There was some kind of personal need that was overriding all of those kinds of things. Why would a teacher or a person of power abuse their position like this? Because they can. I mean, essentially, there's always this question of, you know, there must be some kind of underlying pathology that's going on. And sometimes there is, but usually it's because the person can, if they didn't want to do it, then they wouldn't have done it. But there's some kind of interest, right? In, in this case, we have sexual interest. There was some kind of interest that continued this process of abuse going, where the person just believed that what they were doing was not wrong. Krauss pleaded guilty to all the charges back in January, going up against some strong evidence from the prosecution, including communication via Snapchat and explicit photos of Krauss herself. She knows that all of this is wrong, and yet is taking explicit photos that can be tracked and are on Snapchat. Why would she do that? Well, because in her mind, she's having a relationship with them. That's, that's, that's the crux of all of this. All of these things, Snapchat, right, text messages, right, all of these, you know, sexually explicit stuff, all of those things happen in healthy relationships. All of those things are relatively normal. What makes them abnormal now is the context with which those things are being done. We have an adult woman and we have minor children. And so because of that, we can look back and say, well, why would she, you know, have all of this paper trail? Like, why would, why would she, you know, uh, open herself up to, to, to liability like this? And it's because she didn't think she was liable. It's because she was having a relationship with these children. She didn't see this as abuse. She may, she, and again, she might have to have convinced herself, but at the time that she started engaging in the actual hands-on contact, even the text messages and Snapchat messages, she, she had long left the, the idea that she was an adult and was firmly entrenched in this idea that she was in a relationship with. So going from being a teacher and teaching these children to having a relationship, at least in her mind, how do you make that big of a leap? You compartmentalize, right? You, at that point then, once you start engaging in the abuse, you're no longer that authority figure to that victim. You may be that authority figure just when you show up to work and with other people who are not victims. But once you start down that road of abusing these individuals, whoever it is they are, and in this case, we have the, the teenage boys, but 
you compartmentalize that role as being authority figure and you start using the role as being a lover or a romantic partner, you start transitioning yourself out of the authority mode and into sort of a, a balanced mode where there's equity, there's equity between the two of you. There clearly isn't, but in your mind, you've transitioned out of that sort of detached role into an, an attached role. This week, Krauss received the maximum sentence of 33 years behind bars. Delatory says that punishment fits the crime. The, these kinds of abuses, I, I know it seems like they're happening more regularly. The, the, the reality is, is that they've been happening since before you know we can we, we've been measuring that we're only able to know about these now because of social media and because of smartphones and all these kinds of, they've been happening for decades upon hundreds of years so this isn't unique women offenders have not been punished to the extent that male offenders are often so i think it's important that we see this uh we see this crime uh, the, as what it is, and that is a betrayal of trust and sexual abuse and punish the offender no matter what their sex is. Right now, Krauss is only 24 years old, meaning she'll be released when she's 57. Over the next three decades, Delatory says she'll likely have a change of heart. I think re re reformation is certainly possible. What we know and the research says about women sexual offenders is that they don't recidivate, so it's unlikely that she's going to engage in this behavior again. It's certainly possible. Everybody has their own red flags and their own triggers to engaging in problematic behaviors. The science says that women don't do this all that often. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if she came out in a better position psychologically than where she is right now as she enters into prison. And if we're talking about recovery, the students in this case, the victims or survivors, they're just young kids. I mean, some of them just starting out in puberty. How did they get through this after, you know, having a relationship with their teacher, a very adult relationship at a young age? Yeah, it's a violation of trust. And so that's going to be the first thing that needs to be refostered, right? The other thing is, is that there can be some underlying consequences that I think a lot of people don't really think about. Clearly, they're going to need therapy to deal with being abused. Yes. But it also changes the way you view sex. And it's certainly possible that without the proper intervening and proper education as to what healthy sex actually is, these individuals may really struggle with being able to foster romantic relationships or have an inappropriate uh, context with which they engage in sex. So I think it's important then that education about what is healthy and what is unhealthy continue along with therapy and along with being able to reestablish appropriate bonds with authority figures. As for the crime itself, Delatory says Krauss's young age could have played a factor. But there has been some research that looks at when women, particularly women teachers, commit this crime. It's usually a very smaller age gap than when men commit this crime. Obviously, when men commit this crime, there's a whole range of, uh, of students that they have access to that they engage in and problematic sexual behaviors with. But when it comes to teachers, there's been some research that looks at that that, that gap is actually pretty narrow, that a 10-year age gap isn't unheard of. And in some ways, it's the, the, the abuser, right? The woman utilizes that sort of less than a generation gap as a way of creating a false connection between herself and her victims. It's also interesting to me that there are multiple victims or survivors in this case. So it's not that she just had one relationship with one student, but she was preying, if we want to use that verb, on multiple students. How is it that she would keep track of all of these things or justify having these relationships with more than one boy at a time? You know, it's one of those things where you start you start thinking about how can this person play out all of these things just in in their everyday life. Forget whether or not they're, they're abusive relationships. How does she manage relationships just at all? And I think she probably was thinking about how she would use them uh, differently. Right, so she approached each kind of abusive behavior in a much different way, allowing her and the ability to compartmentalize what she's doing with one, what she's doing with the other, what she's doing with her husband. All of these things sort of play different roles in her life. And so at that point, then she's she's able to kind of multitask them better rather than just being someone who's, you know, on a spree, just abusing anybody that she can. 
At the time of the crimes, Krauss was newly married. Delatory says that makes the situation different from others he's seen. It is curious that uh, she would be a newlywed. That's not really what you anticipate. So there must be something else that's going on, some other stressor that was happening in her life outside of the relationship for her to seek attention from these minor children. As to whether Kraus and her husband will stay married, that remains to be seen. I I'm not here to say, you know, when is the right time to get a divorce or when's the right time. I'm like, I'm not here to, to, to tell that to anybody. But you do have to wonder now if you're the other partner, where do you stand in this relationship? Where do you want to go with it? How do you find yourself, you know, healing from this betrayal that has occurred, particularly this kind of betrayal? What would lead her or anyone, I guess, to have an affair when they're married in a committed relationship? Why would she step out of her marriage? All different kinds of reasons why someone would step out of their marriage, all different kinds of reasons as to why people cheat. You know, the issue becomes what is stressing about what is going on in that individual's life? And it, it, was there a sense that she could not communicate with her partner? Was, was, some kind, was there some kind of underlying need that was not being met or not being addressed? So it's one of those things where you have to also be a full and complete person before even entering into a relationship. A, a marriage, a, a, a relationship is not the time for you to do all of your own healing. It's a time for you to grow as, a, as an individual and as a couple, but it's not the time for you to do your own psychological healing. Those kinds of things need to come outside of the context of a relationship or else you find yourself needing and wanting, but not being able to express what those needs, wants, and desires are. And for any parents watching, Delatory has some advice. The first thing is, is that parents also need to have a better understanding of what is healthy sex and what is unhealthy sex. There's a lot of misinformation and disinformation that's out there when it comes to what children are engaging in and what children think about when they think about sex. Sex education by the schools isn't going to be enough. Abstinence you know, programs alone, those, that's not enough. You have to be able to communicate and not be awkward, right? To, the more awkward you become, the more awkward that their child is going to be along with you. Their, their, their children measure themselves and they measure their emotional availability based on what their parents have been able to model for them. So it's important that, that the parents also have a better understanding of the education, being able to have open communications and not just about this stuff. Ask them about how school is going just generally. Having open communication isn't just about communication about the problematic things. It's also about the good things and fostering those kinds of things, uh, fostering all the positive things that are going on to establish that bond of trust that as they get older, they may not want to talk to you, but they may know that you are there no matter what. On top of her 33 year prison sentence, Krauss is also required to pay a $5,400 fine and must register as a sex offender for the rest of her life. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.